Got the three Camelot dogs out here with the Presser Canary. Look at that. Yeah. Get out of that. Thick. You know, this is basically Camelot blood over here. DDK9. Got a few, few little bit of bloods in there. But, you know, basically those bloods are all thick, uh, protective style dogs, keeping in, in, uh, in step with the Camelot vision, which is basically heavy bone, a heavy bone red dog that can put in work. As you know, Snow is a DDK9 dog, which is uh, heavy, heavy on the Camelot side. She also has a big baller kennel in her. And I don't know how he made his dogs, but I think I heard them say he got some Camelot in his original stock. I don't know for sure, but I'm one of those people that, you know, a dog doesn't have to be 100% this or 100% that. You know, if it's a Camelot dog and then you, you breed it with something else here and there, but the dogs you're breeding it with exhibit the same characteristics as Camelot. And then you take a dog like this that's lime bred, inbred, all that. When you take a dog like this that's lime bred and inbred, Debo, and then you mix him with basically his own blood, I mean, what you really get is just a better version of, of your own blood. You know, because it's only but so much you can lime breed and inbreed. That's why all the, when I hear the word purebred, I automatically think, health issues most people think purebred i'm gonna get some money debo come here <whistles> debo on his shit now he wants to go after the people some kind of sorority or something he ain't been out he was demanding to come out cherokee too he was demanding to be let loose <clears throat> you can see what she's on that stick dropped once she picked it up in mid-air As you can see, uh, we were coming out the house and this is our new dog, Gucci, Camelot girl. You see the deep red, you know, so the bully blue giant, I mean the big baller kennel. And my Camelot blood has a little razor's edge in it, a little, you know, a little bit of this, you know, a little bit of that. But let's just keep it real. What do you see? Sometimes you gotta take things on face value. What do you see? A red, short, stocky dog, right? Camelot. Another, this is another example of a red dog. What do you see? Short, stocky. Debo has a son. That's 70, that's 80 pounds right now. It's nine months, so. You know, the son is going to be 90 pounds, 100 pounds before the year is out. And Debo's still going through a little growth, growth stage. But Debo is really short and stout, so I don't really need him to get much bigger. <whistles> Everyone that sees him thinks when they see him on uh, on um, YouTube and on Instagram, they think he's a lot bigger than he is. And the truth is, with these Camelot dogs, <whistles> you may get some short dogs. Which, if you've been watching my videos, you realize it's not a bad thing. Because a lot of these people want a 140 pound dog, but can't handle it. I mean, look at this dog right here, like I said before. 80 pound dog. Look at the muscles on this damn dog. 
Think about it. Look at this shit. Can run like the wind. Never gives up. Imagine her at 120. She probably breaks some bones trying to run. Will break your bones if you didn't know how to train her. She's a very calm, collective, cool dog. Very muscular. Very, very muscular. She's about to be three years old. And Cherokee's like, what up? Let's run. Camelot, she saw me put the stick up. Ooh, Camelot dog goes crazy. Ooh, now, I'm, look, she's warning, warning signs. Look at this shit, Camelot, baby. I raised the stick up. Like, and you see him? Press the canary. See, this is how, this is what happens when you have a pack. So, you know, me raising this stick set her Camelot blood off. And that's how you know, see? That's why you don't have to keep constantly inbreeding. People keep doing it, but to each his own. <clears throat> you know, sometimes you can outcross. This is an outcross. But as you can see, you're looking at a Camelot dog. Look at that, look at, look at Debo's speed. You missed it. That's what you get. Fast, strong dog. Look at that stride on that boy. Camelot. Now, here's what I want to say, you know. This is a great look that I have here with Debo. Now, I could just keep breeding him with her. We're inbreed him. Get that. Get off of that. To get that look again. And I've seen her, her guardian instincts come out twice today. We walked out the house. She saw a statue. She thought it was some kind of human or something. She went off. Just now I raised that stick. And she thought, this little baby goose, she thought, man, that's aggressive gesture. And went off. Um, also, I was I trying to tap her butt to make her sit earlier. And Debo was like, like, yo, nobody, no, no, don't do nothing crazy around me. Because Camelot dogs will take a bite out of crime if they feel threatened or if they see behavior that they don't like they'll bite you dude even if you're the owner you're doing something that they deem you know too aggressive you're, you you try to discipline another dog they may not like the way you're disciplining them they may come after you but as snow she doesn't care because she's not like a pure pure superbred camelot dog she's camelot a little bit of chevy you know, and a lot, like bully. She's got a lot of bully in her. Now, not to say that Camelot ain't a bully because he has razor's edge in him, but it's the kind of razor's edge from back in the day that take a bite out of crime. Back in the days, dogs were bred for a purpose. Nowadays, dogs are bred to sit in strollers. <whistles> what you can see. You can have that balance. <clears throat> That's why you got to go to the right kennel. Get the right dog. It's good when people inbreed the dog. Ooh, look at that speed on him. Look at that. It's good to inbreed because that gives you that, that breed. But then you can outcross into other breeds that, you know, may not be the same bloodline, but they have the same characteristics. Short, wide, thick dogs, you know, that don't take no shit. You know? It's kind of um, humid today. I'm quite impressed with the way Debo turned out. I mean, he, he makes his father look bad. His father's way bigger than him. But see, Debo has that look, man. Debo has that look. 
And how I'm gonna keep this look going is, I'm just gonna breed them to, you know, I'm gonna breed in a way where other thick dogs that have a little bit of attitude. And then I'll talk to the people that have the pure Camelot dogs and see if they wanna do some things. You know? Thick, thick coat on this dog. Thick coat. Yeah, I'm gonna talk to some guys and see, you know, it's it's two Camelot breeders out here that I know of. Well, I'll, I'll list all the Camelot breeders. You got Crack Kennel. They from Philly, that's where I'm originally from. You got Straight Drop Kennel, which is an affiliate. And then in uh, Straight Drop Kennel, uh, I know these guys, you know, they know me, but their dogs are more, a little bit more fiery than mine. But at the same time, I can have a dog that's more fiery as well. But it's all about if anybody wants to ever try to, you know, work with me or do some kind of business where we can kind of, you know, at some point everybody comes to what's called a dead end in their breeding. Well, you have to outcross. You just have to. And I believe I got the best things that you can um, outcross your Camelot dogs to because I have DDK9, Bully Blue Giant. I got Bossy Blood, the beginning of the shit that make Bossy Blood. And I actually have a Bossy Blooded dog, right? But also my dogs are, have very, very high quality, um, high names that people can look up and they have the temperament. So, as you can see, nobody's trying to kill each other. They're not overly to the moon with it. They're stable temperaments. And if you piss them off or do something you're not supposed to do, I don't know what's, I can't really tell you, but if you do something you're not supposed to do, they're gonna let you know about it. They're gonna warn you first. You know, as they get older, they may bite you, I don't know. But they will warn you. They'll give you a nice warning flex up and let you know don't like that and um you know it's more stable than a, a regular camelot dog you set him off he's coming straight at you coming straight at you to take a take a chunk and it is what it is another thing uh oh and i will mention the other kennels that believe camelot blood we got my man zulu nation Zulu Family Nation out in, I believe, Arizona. He breeds Camelot dogs. And also you got Imperial Flames Kennel. But he's more so of a guy that wants to do pure, 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 100% purebred. Nothing that, nothing else in the dog. And he's gotta be a Pacific Camelot dog. So I don't know, you know, but maybe one day he'll rec he could recommend the breeding. He doesn't really, you know, believe in certain things, but me personally, I don't believe no dog is 100% pure and people hang papers and people lie, men lie, women lie, but DNA don't lie. So, like I said, this dog right here, Snow. I've seen her ragdoll a Connie Corso. I've seen her ragdoll my Prince of Canaria. I've seen her beat up all the dogs in my house when little scuffles break out. But yet she doesn't look for the trouble. She just stays in her lane and relaxes. But when other people become aggressive towards puppies, or other dogs, I should say, become aggressive towards puppies, or if a fight breaks out, she's gonna jump in and let everyone know that she's the one in charge. The only dog I've seen put her in her place was her father. Bully, uh, Bloody Blue Giants, Louis V. Louis V is her father. Basically, he's a, you know, a cross between Bully Blue Giants and Big Baller Kennel. And like I said, that breeding, that breeding was, I believe, it was actually a Big Baller Kennel dog that was actually outcrossed. It's a dog known Johnny Bags Donuts. And that dog, when I look back on it, it, it has a lot of, uh, it goes back to a BGK, Big Gemini Kennels. 
if you guys know what that is. And Big Gemini Kennels also has some Iron Cross in it. So that's how, you know, you guys probably don't know all the bloodlines, but I'm just putting out names. If you want to know where all this, if you go on pedigrees, you can chase Brack until you can't trace back no more. This guy goes all the way back to none other than Camelot's the Duke. And uh, I think it was called Maxine Fire, Maxine's Fire or whatever. So both sides of this dog's pedigree, because he's an inbred, linebred dog, go back to Camelot's the Duke. And that's just what it is. So basically, he's a perfected dog. Now, actually, he does have some razor's edge in him, but it's some 100-pound, just monster razor's edge dog from back in the days. Just a monster. Something that'll snatch something up with a head, probably like, who knows how many inches. 30-inch head type dog. But like I said before, I believe that Big Baller Kennel used Camelot to create his dogs. But when I searched it back, I didn't find any Camelot. What I found was, um, I found Disciple, I found the dogs from Big Gemini's Kennel. And I also found some Iron Cross, which is Big Gemini's Kennel. So, and if you know anything about those dogs, that dog, put it like this, it's a big 140 pound brindle, black, uh, brindle, dark brindle dog that, that will just, I'm gonna just tell you like this, it's a human eater, you know? So, and keeping it gangster or keeping it in step with the Camelot blood, which is, supposedly just old family red nose dogs old red dogs and which i it's debatable people say that there's doggy bordeaux in there so let's just say that there is you know it's some more mastiff being mixed in there to make it more of a more of a just a beast of a dog But the temperaments, you know, are the same. Big block bone-headed dogs from back in the day. You know, if you keep something 100% pure, you're gonna have issues, genetic issues and problems. I don't believe in that. But I also don't believe in just breeding all kind of stuff and you don't know what you're doing. So. We out here, it's time to take these guys in. But like I said, you can outcross, you can inbreed, you can line, you can inbreed, you can do whatever you want, man. <laughs> but for best results, you take an inbreed and a line breed dog, then you breed them back to something that's basically what he is, what, what bloodline he originally came from. Maybe he has a few other types of bloods in there, but they're all the same kind of blood. What I mean by that is they exhibit the same behaviors. To excel, they're large, big boned, muscled dogs that are basically pit bull, mastiff type dogs. You know, so that when you do mix these bloods together, you're just gonna get more of what you already have. More bone, more mass, more protective nature. And, you know, instead of just keep eating, breathe, and breathe, and breathe, and breathe, and breathe, can't do it. But if you're making money and it's working, do it. Now, if your dogs do something crazy, I don't know. But people want what they want and they pay for it. your boy Mel, Quark Kennels, I'm out.